In a world where reality often meets fantasy, one creature has trotted nay, pranced through the ages, capturing hearts and imaginations alike. Yes, we're talking about the unicorn, not just any mythical creature, but perhaps the most elusive of them all. Join us as we embark on a magical journey from the ancient plains of India to the chivalrous courts of medieval Europe to uncover the tale of the unicorn. Our story begins not in a far-off fantasy land, but in the ancient texts of India, where the unicorn first made its legendary debut. It was described not as a horse with a single horn, but more like a wild beast with a single spiraling tusk, proving that even in ancient times, unicorns didn't quite get their stories straight. These early accounts painted a picture not of a delicate fairy tale creature, but a formidable animal that commanded respect, perhaps even fear, among those who encountered it. The ancient Indian unicorn was more akin to a rhinoceros than a horse, suggesting that its origins were grounded in reality, albeit seen through the imaginative lens of myth and legend. As tales of the unicorn galloped from India through Persia and into the heart of ancient Greece, its image began to evolve, as if by magic, or perhaps through a series of enthusiastic misinterpretations. The Greeks, ever the scholars and not ones to let a good myth pass them by without documentation, eagerly inscribed the unicorn into their natural histories. They portrayed it as a wild ass, endowed with a single spiraling horn, reputed to be faster than all known creatures and as elusive as the truth in a politician's promise. This depiction was a far cry from the gentle, horse-like beings of later imagination, suggesting a creature more formidable than fanciful. The Greeks' accounts, often based on second-hand observations from travelers and traders who had ventured into the distant lands of India, might have been influenced by the real animals they encountered, such as the oryx or the rhinoceros, leading to a game of historical telephone where the unicorn's true image was lost in translation. Aristotle himself, with a hint of skepticism, mentioned the unicorn, or as he put it, a beast with the body of a horse, the head of a deer, and the tail of a lion, topped with a singular, defining horn. It's possible he raised an eyebrow while writing this, pondering the reliability of his sources. Yet this wild ass of the Greeks captured the imagination of the ancient world, its single horn symbolizing not just uniqueness, but a connection to the divine. Some historians chuckle at the thought, suggesting the ancient depictions were the result of a game of intercultural whispers, where each retelling added a layer of mystery and misconception to the unicorn's tale. Others speculate that perhaps the Greeks, in their wisdom, chose to embrace the myth rather than the mundane, weaving the unicorn into their tapestry of mythic creatures, each symbolizing an aspect of the human condition from the pursuit of purity to the battle against the untamable nature of the wild. As the unicorn's journey continued, its portrayal as a wild ass transformed, taking on a more mystical and benign character. By the time it pranced into the medieval imagination, the unicorn had become not just a creature of wonder, but a symbol of all that was pure, unreachable, and eternally captivating in the human saga. The Greeks, with their penchant for blending the real with the ideal, had set the stage for the unicorn's enduring legacy, a legacy that would gallop through the ages, captivating hearts and minds with its blend of mystery, beauty, and the eternal human quest for the extraordinary. Fast forward to medieval Europe, where the unicorn truly found its stride. Here, amidst the chivalric codes and crusades, the unicorn transcended its beastly beginnings to become a symbol of purity, grace, and let's not forget, a significant insurance liability, considering its penchant for elusiveness. It was commonly believed that only a virgin could tame a unicorn, a narrative that, quite conveniently, excused many a medieval knight for not bringing such a fantastical creature back from their quests. After all, who could blame them? Unicorns were not known for their punctuality or obedience. Ah, the knights of medieval Europe, those storied figures of bravery, honor, and an unparalleled knack for not stumbling upon unicorns. Despite their many valiant efforts and quests into the dense, enchanted forests, the unicorn remained as elusive as ever, a whisper of silk in a world of chainmail. However, what these knights lacked in unicorn-catching skills, they made up for in their patronage of the arts. 
They commissioned magnificent tapestries and illuminated manuscripts that depicted unicorns in all their mythical glory, frolicking in lush forests and often found in the company of pure maidens. These artworks served as windows into the soul of the medieval mind, where the unicorn was not just an animal, but a symbol of all that was untamed and pure in the world. In these tapestries, unicorns weren't just mythical creatures. They were metaphors for Christ, for love, for the unattainable. The image of a unicorn resting its head on a maiden's lap, encircled by a golden fence, yet unbound and free, captured the medieval imagination and underscored the era's complex relationship with themes of purity and captivity. It's no wonder that these images became so iconic, encapsulating the dual nature of the unicorn as both a wild, untamable force and a creature of delicate beauty and innocence. Through these artistic endeavors, the unicorn became ingrained in the cultural fabric of medieval Europe, a symbol as potent and mysterious as the Holy Grail itself. It's said that the throne of Denmark was made from unicorn horns, actually narwhal tusks, but let's not ruin a perfectly good story and that powdered unicorn horn was the go-to remedy for everything from common pox to poisoning. Such was the unicorn's fame that it found its way onto the Scottish royal coat of arms, a place it holds to this day, reminding us of the time when to believe in the power of a unicorn was to believe in the possibility of a world filled with wonder and magic. From ancient texts to medieval tapestries and now the icons of pop culture, the unicorn has pranced its way through history always elusive, always enchanting. Today they grace everything from children's books to corporate logos, embodying purity, beauty, and the power of really good branding. So there you have it, the journey of the unicorn from the ancient world to a medieval myth and beyond. Perhaps the true magic of the unicorn lies not in its horn, but in its ability to inspire, enchant, and sell merchandise. And who knows, Maybe they're out there, hiding in plain sight, waiting for the right moment to remind us that some magic is real. Or at least really good at hiding. Thank you for joining us on this whimsical ride through history. If you've enjoyed this journey into the myth of the unicorn, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Keep your eyes on the forest and your hearts open to magic. Until next time, keep chasing unicorns, metaphorically of course.